If you are over the age of 35, stop everything you're doing right now. After a lifetime of eating fatty foods, you may run the risks of a stroke or heart attack due to plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. To learn how you can reduce your risks, visit youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856 today. This may be a life-changing call for you or someone you love. Thank you, and we hope to hear from you. Experience. So, now, one, one of the things that we didn't get to cover with you the last time was um, your role in Smart Guy. You know, you mm-hmm. guys have about, you know, 40, 50 some episodes of that. Um, talk about how you got that role and talk about, you know, the beginning to the end. Like, why did that end? It was such a great show. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, my, my involvement uh, with that show came when I was living in New York. I was working at Motown Records at the time. I was a signed artist there working up under Andre Harrell. God rest his soul. Um, and I was there recording, I believe it was my second LP with Motown. It was like a sophomore album that I was attempting to, um, produce and put out, uh, through Motown. But, uh, you know, and, and for the sake of transparency and all honesty, I was kind of in a position where I was a little bit frustrated up there at Motown at the time. Um, not that anything, you know, anybody did anything to me personally. It, it wasn't like that. It's just me and the company in itself. We weren't really able to figure out a way uh, to kind of work together where they really understood where I was trying to go as an artist. And I didn't really understand the direction that they were going as a as a label at that time. Mm-hmm. So I was a little bit frustrated um, dealing with the growing pains of that as we were all trying to figure it out. And as I was going through those growing pains, um, you know, this audition came through to audition for uh, the role of Marcus on Smart Guy. I put it, I put myself on tape in New York. They sent the tape out to Los Angeles is before, of course, the internet and all that and Zoom where you could literally do all that stuff in real time now. But uh, I sent the tape out um, and, uh, you know, the producers and casting um, love the, the stuff that I did on the tape. They eventually flew me out to Los Angeles to audition in front of the network, to audition in front of Disney. And then I ultimately booked the role by the grace of God. And uh, I worked on the pilot. And then we waited maybe about four, maybe about four months till we found out uh, that we officially got picked up as a series. And so we initially started off, um, people know it as a Disney show. It is a Disney owned show, but it originally came out on the WB network back in the day. So there was a a joint partnership that Disney and the WB network did. And so uh, that's where we originally premiered. You know, our ratings, our ratings were really, really good. Um, As far as like you you saying, why were there only so many episodes that that we were given or so many seasons? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily think it had anything to do with ratings uh, per se. I think it just had to do with the fact simply that the WB network at that time, they were shifting their their demographic uh, and their viewing audience that they were beginning to cater to was now leaning more towards, I guess you could say, a mainstream audience, if you will. Um, initially, when the WB first um, kickstarted, I don't know if a, a lot of people remember it, but the WB really had a lot of like black shows on it, whether it was, whether it was the Jamie Foxx show, uh, the Wayne Show, uh, our show, I think. Uh, Malcolm and Eddie. Yep. No, Malcolm and Eddie. I think was on UPN. I think the Parenthood. Oh, okay. The Parenthood uh, with Robert Townsend and the late great Suzanne Douglas. God rest her soul. I think they were on the WB as well. So black shows, black sitcoms, if you will, were the ones that initially established the audience for the WB. And then over time, as they begin to, I think, attract a more diverse or more mainstream audience, if you will, that's when they began to kind of shift their focus more towards shows that they they felt could cater to that particular demographic that they were trying to attract. So I think it was really just a thing where there was just no no room on the time slot for the kind of shows that they wanted to kind of do uh, and produce moving forward. But that being said, you know, our tenure at the at the WB was a good one. Uh, they treated us with respect. Um, I appreciate them for giving us the opportunity to present Smart Guy on their network. And eventually, I think that um, Disney taking back the show and like solely owning it and distributing it uh, 
actually worked out in our favor later on down the line because I think that's where we really built up kind of like our core cult fan base uh for smart guy was on was on the disney channel so like when kids would come home from school or they'd be doing a homework or whatever you know smart guy would be on uh so that really helped i think to uh seal seal in our our particular fan base was being on on the disney channel but no overall it was a it was a great experience working on smart guy just you know for people out there that may be curious you know working with taj working with essence jj omar working with the producers man it was an amazing experience man like those are still people that i keep in contact with to this day and that i regard highly and that i that i love i follow um this page on facebook it's called black fathers and it's, it's ironically enough i was on there today and it was a picture of um smart guy or a film of uh old shot of smart guy and the caption was who remembers the show smart guy they had, in my opinion, an underrated black TV father in Floyd Henderson, a widower, a widower, excuse me, with these kids, one gifted. He owned his own home business and always gave great advice to his kids being tough. This character should be ranked higher among fictional black characters. And I'm like, well, I'm happy to have the brother Jason Weaver on because I would love to ask him that. What do you think about that, that statement? Is it true in your opinion? And how much of an impact culturally at the time did you see what you brothers were doing on screen? Ah oh, man, I wholeheartedly echo your sentiment, my brother. Uh, I think even the way that you worded it and 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 how you put it, you know, in the comments is was eloquent in the way that 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 it should be shared and how it should be brought up. I mean, I totally agree. I mean, let me let me say this. I think at the time, uh, people were able to recognize that the storyline and the way that these characters were positioned and the story that we were telling, in particular, with a black single father. It was definitely something that that hadn't been seen, you know, on TV in that in that particular era. So it was refreshing. There were people out there that did take note of it and recognize uh, the narrative that they, that we were thrusting out there, uh, which was a positive one as it related to black men raising their children, owning their homes, and owning their own businesses. I don't think it hit much later. I don't think it hit different as kids say nowadays. I don't think it hit different until, you know, years later um, when there was a generation of of the viewing audience that noticed that there was just a lack of that completely on TV, you know, nowadays. They just saw there there weren't Mm -hmm. a lot of examples like that. And so when a show like Smart Guy um, would kind of reappear or or reemerge, uh, that gave them the opportunity to get, you know, reacquainted back with that narrative. And I think people looked at that and was like, oh, my God, man, what they were really presenting and what they were showing even back in the in the, in the 90s was really dope. Um, it was unique in its own right. I mean, you know, single black fathers in America raising their kids, owning their own home and taking care of themselves and their, and their kids. That's not a, a rare situation. I mean, I'm one of those fathers. I'm a, I'm a living example of that. Uh, but I think for, you know, a lot of people in maybe mainstream America and even some people in the black community, that was just a refreshing thing to see. And I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of the show that was able to show that, that was able to celebrate that and acknowledge that. Uh, hopefully there'll be more shows on that will follow along in the line. I, you know, as far as us get, uh, getting the recognition or being underrated in that particular regard, um, there may be some truth to that, but I tell you what, I I, I won't look at it like that. I'll I'll put it to you this way: if if we were the ones that helped kind of kick down the door to present those kind of stories, and we kind of just did our job, then that then that's what we were put in that position to do at that particular time. And I think because we did that, or because we represented that, you have a lot more black writers out right now and producers who are kind of following along in that same suit. I mean, you have Kenya Barris and, you know, writers like that in television who are dedicated to showing uh, a, a, a sound and positive black family structure, you know, through Blackish and through Grownish and other shows that he's done. Um, who else? Um, possibly Ava DuVernay and 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 people like that are, are also creating uh, uh, projects like that in the future. Who knows? But I I just know when it's all said and done, with when it came to Smart Guy, I think we did our job for at the time that that we were out there doing it. So, but I do appreciate you sharing that sentiment. 
and and any other brothers out there that feel the same way, I appreciate y'all because that that is something that we definitely took pride in at the time, for 